Hi, and welcome to the Crit Hit Wild podcast, where we talk about all things Marvel Crisis Protocol and review a different character every week. I'm your host, Jared. I'm Brad. And I'm Fred. And uh, we should have a Brandon. Um, at some point during the cast, maybe a, a wild Brandon will uh, show up in, in the cast. But um, yeah, how's your guys' weeks going? You guys doing all right? I'm doing okay. Uh, I just drove back from Newell, West Virginia, which uh, if, if you were to to make the map of West Virginia with your hand, uh, it's the very top of the middle finger. Okay. Hey, that makes sense. I literally just yeah. did it, and it makes sense. I know where you're at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I just got back from there. So. Uh, we, we just won't talk about my week. Well, go ahead, Brad. Okay. <laughs> Tell us. Oh no! I mean, no, I'm not gonna go into. It. I did play Pokemon last night. Brandon's not here to talk about Pokemon, so how'd that go? I played. I played Pokemon for the first time. Off the first game, uh, the deck not real consistent at getting going. The one Brandon built me, um, so I just got stomped on the first game. The second game, I was able to put. Brandon in a no win position and he eventually decked himself. Oh wow. I don't know that uh, I've ever seen that. <laughs> yeah. And so uh I won that game technically. The third game, the deck got going correctly and really like shown and worked really cool. But well did you like it? Overall, like was your experience like you're the, like, this, this the is a fun TCG. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, the game's fun. I like and it. From what Brandon said, it's pretty cheap. Um, I'm not going to buy anything because Brandon has everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not been too bad. I, I like it. It's a fun game to just kind of chill with at the end of the night. And just kind of. Yeah. Did you... it, it, have you done a lot of TCG games, Brad? Uh, yeah. Yes. Quite a few. Yeah. You played one of them <laughs> with us. I did. I remember. I, that's not what I, I... And that one wasn't... It wasn't a trading card game, was it? It was more no, like a was, bound set it was, card. Yeah, it was a... What do they call that? Oh, was that the a War, living card game. Was that the War Machine game? Yeah, that, was, that game was good. Yeah. I remember. I remember yeah. that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, that is... That a, game was good. High it, Command. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I enjoyed that game a lot. God, what a... I still have my cards. <laughs> What were you referring to, Fred? Um, I I have played a lot of Magic, and uh, back mm. back way back in the day, and mm. I you have two, is right? Yeah, I'm trying I to played, start a conversation. <laughs> yeah, I played a lot of Magic. Um, I played that High Command game. I played Netrunner, which is also a living card game, not collectible. Um, right, I remember Netrunner game. Yeah, did you play Netrunner? I did. I played it a couple okay. times with you. Yeah, it was a good game. Um, apparently, yeah. that game it was abandoned by the company. The fans took it over, and they're printing new sets of cards. And it's like oh, maybe wow. more popular now than it ever was. People it's, love it, that game. When it, that seems to happen quite a bit when a when a company drops. A, a very beloved IP for no reason. It just gets picked up by people who love it and get ter- gets turned into a better you, and better game. Are you trying to bait me with Guild Ball? <laughs> I was getting ready to cough and say Guild Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> I, I've played other but ones yeah. too, like Keyforge, which that's a weird game. Um... Because that one, you don't build your own deck. You buy random decks, and you're not allowed to change them. Oh, I forgot about High Command. What a what a great memory that just got unlocked. That's so oh, it's so fun. That's great. It was a good game. It was a very fun game. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, back to, I guess, Marvel Crisis Protocol. We're, we're not... Turn it into a TCG podcast or anything. We were just uh, oh, oh, fucking oh. riffing for a minute. Good. 
something a little more on topic. Uh, Marvel Champions, which is a living card game that's being released right now. That's a good game, guys. If you like Marvel characters, give it a go. You, every Everyone at the table plays. It's cooperative. Everyone plays an individual superhero, and X-Men are coming out this fall. So, oh. I guess super one, cool. one last tangent, but it is Marvel-related before we get into the cast proper. Have you checked out very much for um, Marvel Snap? What's that? It's a new uh, TCG. It's it's, I think it's online. It's kind of like a Hearthstone. It, it's online mm. for for like mobile, and I guess you could probably get it on on PC. But it's a uh, it's a card game for for Marvel. But it's it's real weird the way like instead of instead of like magic where like you you put out your creatures and stuff like that, and they can attack each other, you attack face or something like that. Like every card has like a power i think your deck limit is only 12 that might be wrong but it's like a really small deck and instead there are three like areas you have like avengers base uh, and then like other spots There's like th- three um zones essentially and you play cards to those zones and after so many i think it's like six rounds whoever has the most power in each of those zones uh if you win two out of three zones you win the game it, it, it's a really weird take on like TCGs, but it looks really, really yes. cool. So, uh, I've been burnt on mobile games before, but I might take a look at it. it was like, this see. is a card game. They're not as bad as like some of your other standard mobile yeah. games. But, anyways, on to uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, so, for news and announcements, well, first off, I'm sure if you're watching this on YouTube at the moment, you can tell that I do not have the image of Red or of Human Torch up. Instead, I have Red Skull. Uh, we were planning on doing uh, Human Torch this week, but because we uh, got the back card of Red Skull revealed and we had a special request to do Red Skull, uh, we're going to go ahead and do him this week. So we'll be taking a look at him. Um, but as for news and announcements, uh, again, Second Wind is coming up. That'll be October 15th and 16th. So uh, the wait list is getting cleared out pretty frequently. So if you haven't signed up yet or you're thinking about going... Uh, make sure that you get on the wait list and that you email Vince. I'm sure that you can find him in some of the Discord servers uh, if you need any kind of contact info for, for Second Wind. But uh, get on the wait list. Uh, should be a good time. Uh, we're looking forward to going. And if you see us there, be sure to come by and say hi. Uh, at the time of this release, I believe that Charleston will be having uh, our local tournament at like the day that this comes out. So I Or be... yesterday. Or yesterday, it depends. Yeah, when we get out over the weekend. Uh, so good luck uh, for anybody playing in, and unfortunately I won't be able to make it. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys have fun. What do you What are you taking, Brad? Little little sneak peek. Are you uh, Since this will this will come out after the tournament. Yeah. yeah. What do you bring? If um if I'm feeling up to playing, uh, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna play X Men just because I know them well enough. Mm-hmm. Although I could audible into X Force, but I've got some new tech in my. Uh, x-men list specifically for malika is it going to be similar to what you're going to run at second wind uh yes okay but it would be it would be to test it for a second wind. that would be good i would love to be able to get some damn practice <laughs> i can't my schedule is not allowing me to get any games in uh here recently so but uh the october tournament for uh charles west virginia is uh we're not sure on that one yet. I think we gotta yeah. figure out. It's either gonna be the, the week timeline. before or not happen. Yeah. So once we get that, I'll get that out to uh, you guys again. Um, if you have a tournament that you want us to plug, uh, feel free to leave it in comments or contact me on Discord. I'm in the TTS Discord. My name is Seven. There. I'm on the um, yeah the TTS Discord. I'm on the Alfredo Sashi Taco Truck Discord. I'm in the Danger Room Discord. So you can find me on there if you just want to message me. Or you can email us with specifics at crithitwild at gmail.com. Uh, but yeah, if you have a tournament or something like that you're wanting plugged, feel free to reach out and let me know the specifics of it, and I'll do my best to get it plugged for you. Uh, one last uh, tournament is the Fabricators Forge in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That is on September 24th, and uh, registration is at 10 a.m. I believe dice rolls at 11, and that is a $10 entry fee, which goes back in toward prizes. So... If you're interested, let's announce this other one too. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, shoot. I gotta find it. Someone is less prepared than me. Yeah, well, you talking about tournaments reminded me of the one that Ryan sent us. Oh! In okay. Ohio. Okay, yeah. I uh, forgot about that one. Did not put that in my notes. Go ahead. Uh, uh, well, uh, while you're looking that up. It's gone. Yeah. While you're yeah. looking that up. Um, it's the week after um, uh, Second Wind. Is, it is. It? Yes, but we might as well plug it. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying not to plug it. I'm just trying to... I, th- I believe that it is the week after Second Wind. And... It, Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay, here, cool. It's um the week after second win, October twenty second. It's at Brookery Games in Fairborn, Ohio. Um, ten dollar entry fee. Um, uh, three rounds minimum, which you hardly ever see that. Um, yeah, and um, check in at eleven thirty. Uh, round one pairings at noon and they have uh long shanks it's event 5363 if you're interested Ooh, I, should so, start, I should start plugging in the long shanks numbers yeah can't think about that. Um, I should, I should start doing you that. can search event numbers on there somewhere so. all right well I think that uh, wraps up the tournament announcements. Uh, as far as uh, AMG announcements, uh, we have just gotten some stuff. Uh, clearly, we got the back of Red Skull. Um, they have been plugging uh, the Sentinel pack that will be coming out in October, and I browsed through that uh, earlier today, and I believe it said that it had two tactics cards that came with it. So while we don't know what those tactics cards are yet, they are at least getting two. So uh, I would presume that they're affiliated hopefully they got some pretty cool affiliated cards but i mean one of them might be unaffiliated so we'll see uh let's go on to cerebro now since what do you have for us brad uh so i made two updates this week um and the next update's ready to go i just i'm trying to sprinkle them out there i started with pretty easy stuff when i'm getting rolled back in here and then i'll get to the more complicated stuff so the first update is um the michael update um this will (laughs) this will finally get michael to start using cerebro instead of a symbol we finally got it yeah there's a new setting you have to turn on it's off by default but when you're making a roster it will show you faction symbols instead of um writing them out the names um i guess some for some people i'm not one of those people so i didn't know this for some people it's easier to like notice that they have symbols in common than to read the text or whatever so if you like that kind of thing turn that feature on uh the other thing is i added um just an ease thing because you could have done this before you just had to add or subtract yourself but um on the dice calculator there's now a tab where it will tell you like if you want to let's say that a character has um two health left and you wanted a chance of doing two or more damage to daze them that's there now it's just oh, two nice. plus and gives you a percentage that's really cool so, yeah you could have done a hundred minus zeros percentage minus ones percentage to get it yourself. But this is just an ease of use thing. It's just right there in front of you. Awesome. Well, thank you for, again, all your hard work. I didn't know about that. I knew about the Michael update. I didn't know about that second one. Yeah, it was uh, the 13th. So that was like cool. yesterday, day well, before. As What's always. Today's day? Thank you for your hard work, Today is Brad. the 15th. Okay. You're the real MVP. Sure. Uh, so this week has been a little uh, jumbled for me because I've been out of town most of the week, so I've not been able to do as much uh, priming for the cast as I normally do. Do you happen to have a launching statistic for this week? No, because I keep forgetting about okay. that. I also forgot to set a reminder, so we'll, we'll breeze past that uh, for this week. Um, oh, no, I said I had one um, last time, and I can bring it up in, like, two seconds. So. Oh, never mind. Look, you I've got body. something. I got something. Hey, I just go. have to get to it. 
statistics, I think. Yeah, I I, uh, I got sent out of town for work uh, to do some training in Kentucky, and uh, my mind has not has been on more real life things than than the podcast this past week. So as far as reminders and stuff go, I have dropped the ball this week. So that's okay. quite all right. I got it. I got it. So, uh, Longshanks has this uh, has this cool little thing, and once again, I don't know if I'm paying to see this or if this is base default for free. But it started with um, uh, what's that called? game called? Guild Ball. Yeah, it started with Guild Ball. <laughs> um, the this guy. Um, he has the handle ghost deer. So it's the ghost deer index and the, and he's on Alfredo's. He's the third host now, but, um, he was wondering about, um, which factions are overplayed and underplayed. So Sam, who does long shanks, he put the ghost deer index, which is a nice little graph that it shows, on the bottom axis, the win rate of a faction and up and down the like amount it's played. And there's a guideline on there of what, where those two things match the play rate and the win rate. Okay. And then it, and then it places everyone on there. So you can see how far up above and below the lines are to see if they're overplayed or not. That's cool. Uh, game played yeah. as much as they want. And it's really cool and it's it's nice visual thing. So like for example, uh, according to this, X Men are being overplayed. Uh, they're being played at a higher percentage than they are winning at. Uh, but they are not the most overplayed. Does that belong to Avengers? It does. That was yep. I'm gonna quiz you guys. Avengers, yeah. Yep. Avengers has a little under fifty percent win rate, and they are just played like crazy. Yeah, they the are, time. they are the highest vertical by a large margin. Like, there's a grid on here, and they're like a whole grid above everybody else. They're the good uh, faction in the starter kit. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. Cabal <laughs> is. Cabal's almost on the line, uh, so the okay. the one the ones on the line are whatever BS is bullshit. Oh, uh, it's RS. It's RS Red Skull. Red Skull. Okay. Defenders, X Force, Asgard. That one, A Force, Black Order, and Convocation. They're all like dead on the line. What do you think the one that's underplayed the most is that's underplayed the most uh-huh all right give me a second uh you, you've already said convocation was on the line yeah convocation's on the line so this okay. is one that is winning a lot more at a In higher rate field. than it's getting played shield shield i'm gonna no. say okay i'm gonna say oh god is this right Wakanda? Oh, oh, yep. That was <laughs> no. Ah, okay. So this is this is a little bit of a trick question. So I'm going to ask you what number two is. Uh, the answer is Malekith. So they, uh, for oh, some reason, for Cabal, probably because of Malekith, they have broken it further down into the three leaders. I mean, he is. Oh, boy. That's because <laughs> the other two are not good. Yeah, they're not. Well, yeah, they, Sin on this list. Where, where's uh, Sin fall? Red Skull and Sin are the ones most left, so that means they have the lowest win rate. Um, right. And Sin is also almost on the line of uh, not being played, right beside Cyclops. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> they also broke out for some reason. I think so. It, they need to give her more health and just like slight okay. tweak. Anyways, I'm sorry. So, number two. What do you think number two is? The one furthest from the line below the line. Is this a faction or a character? It's not a character. It's a faction. It's not a character this time. That's why I, I we're going to go ahead and do this one. It's uh, not a is, right. is, it, uh, is it S.H.I.E.L.D.? <laughs> it's I'm not S.H.I.E.L.D. It S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. is underplayed, but not as far underplayed as this one. Okay. Gosh. Uh... 
Okay. I'm, Make so, the same I, guess that you made. <laughs> no, I, I don't think th- it might be right. I don't, I don't no, know if it's right. Neither of the previous guesses for most were the second. Most. All right, well, take a stab. Or I would have said that. T- take, a, take a second stab there, Fred. If, yeah. the, if the ones that we said earlier aren't aren't what he's talking no. about, go ahead and take a second, no. another guess. Uh, um, have you already mentioned X Force? X Force was think, right about, on the line. X Force was on the line. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what about uh, Spider Foes? Spider Foes slightly overplayed. So not okay. That. that actually makes sense. <laughs> that was a bad guess. <laughs> uh, jeez. Um, I'm trying to remember all the affiliations. Uh, oh, Everyone. Midnight Suns. Uh, let's find Midnight Suns. See if that was a a decent guess. What's that one? Oh, that's Inhumans. They have there's Midnight Suns. Midnight Suns overplayed. Overplayed. Yeah, because oh. they may not get played very much, but they but also don't cool win very much. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. They're they only cool have, kids, but, but they don't win. <laughs> it looks like probably forty-eight percent win rate somewhere in there. It's hard to tell on the graph, and they are played a little less than X Men. So this this was hard because the correct answer is unaffiliated. Ah, oh, I hate that. I hate it. I hate Every it. time he <laughs> tricks us with that bullshit, it's either <laughs> something it. that just came out or it's unaffiliated. He always gets us. Right. He tricks us every <laughs> time. You got the Avengers one right right away, Jerry. I'll because t- it's the obvious answer. I'll take <laughs> I'll take my win answer. and I'll just leave. Uh, <laughs> it looks like. Criminal Syndicate and Brotherhood are probably the second most overplayed. I believe um, it. Yep. Yeah. I believe it. Uh, I, hey, that's me. I am that person. That's me <laughs> the, on the Criminal Syndicate. I'm overplaying them. <laughs> okay, so th- that was our little long shanks corner. I had fun today. I did too. All right. Well, I'm I'm glad that you pulled that up. That was a fun one. The segment wasn't lost. Um. So, for this week's weekly topic, uh, I busted out a fun one, uh, and it is a simple one that I imagine that if you're listening at home, uh, that there's, I can't imagine that there's not a local gaming store where, like, you've gamed, you've played some MCP, and this question did not come up. I I mean, I I just can't imagine that if you're gaming, that at some point somebody didn't ask this. So, what I'm going to ask you guys is what character would you most like to see brought to the game now? Just one character, and why do you want them to be brought in? Uh, go ahead, Brad. Uh, so I want Jamie Madrix, the multiple man, because he is my favorite comic book character. All right. So... He also should have very interesting rules, because his power is every time he gets hit, he makes a duplicate of himself. Now, I was that was another second part. What is one thing that you would like to see him be able to do on the tabletop? Like, if there was a theme, so clearly maybe it's him splitting, or maybe it's something else. But what is something that he has that you would like to see brought to the tabletop? Well, I mean, the duplication. um, And, like, they could cop out and put, like, three of his models on a base and give him grunts. And that would be really easy when he takes damage... If the grunts aren't already out, put them out, and blah, blah, blah. But it would be really cool if they came up with a way to represent him having so many. Because he can make tons. Um, and they should they should limit it. They should not make it unlimited, whatever they do. But um, I saw a fan one the other day where he had grunts, and he had tokens he could put out. And the tokens could contest as if they were an injured character, like the Jonathan token. That's cool. And he and he could put out several tokens. And I thought that was a cool little um, mechanic that they could do something like that. All right. What about you, Fred? Who would you like to see? So come I, ha- the end? I have a, I have a clarifying question. Okay. Uh, am I bound to the Marvel universe? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Dang it. Okay. All right. Then my answer is Kurt Wagner, the Nightcrawler. Okay. Good answer. And what, did I say it wrong? Did I say the wrong thing? 
No, I said good answer. Yeah. Oh, good answer. Okay, I thought so I, I misheard you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that he would be awesome on the table. I'm thinking something in the area of a Quicksilver like, very, very mobile, and about uh, uh, grabbing extracts as quickly as possible. And I think that would be it, it. Could probably see a lot of play, and he would be a fun character to have on the board. Okay. Uh, Fred, my... I had oh. real quick. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Fred. I had a an interesting thought about him when I was thinking about him. I think he could be a character with move dash. <laughs> like he does not move; he just teleports. <laughs> he yeah, just have and then like he no has. Ability superpower he has um action place within four or five range four or, or range five. Ooh, that would be great that four would be... is four is close to a long move so and five is more than yeah but you couldn't move him for any other reason like if you had like avengers assemble type card he wouldn't be able to move he couldn't move i like yeah. this idea that's this really cool good it would yeah. be broken and shit with uh scrolls yeah, like he, if, if yes, he crawls, absolutely, he would, he would be the best scroll writer in the in world. The game. It would in pro- the game. They would probably give him something like if he's holding an objective, he drops all objectives before he. That, that's probably now but then they've started stuck. doing that. Then he'd be stuck. That would be, or, I, or maybe like he gains slow move if he's I, holding an objective. Yeah, I don't think that they're gonna do that. I think they'll give him like a medium move. And then a yeah. paid for teleport. I mean, but I thought it would be really cool. Thing. Yeah, I think it would be awesome if, like, he didn't have move and his he just like his move was place his character within range three or something the, like that. Uh, yeah, the um, uh, the power is called Bamf. Yeah, and then like Bamf. he could pay, and then like it, it was a be it could even be an action, but like you could place him within five. Yeah, like that would be awesome. Yeah. that'd be so cool. That would be cool. That would be yeah. very cool. And okay. they should they should give him master swordsman. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just because yeah. you want everyone to have master swordsman. <laughs> he should that have is, that superpower. It is very fitting because yeah. he is a master swordsman. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, mostly from watching Errol Flynn movies. <laughs> uh, because he, being a pirate makes you an, a master swordsman. Oh yeah. Anyway. Uh, Jared, who do you want to see? Apocalypse. Oh, good choice. Oh, not not yeah. only is he just like, like he's a very standout character from like, you know, clearly I grew up watching, uh, I watched a lot of Spider-Man cartoon and I watched a lot of the X-Men, like 90s cartoon. Uh, and that's kind of what I grew up on. That's one of the reasons why I like Sentinel so much. Like the first time I ever watched X-Men and saw the Sentinel bust through the mall and try to get Jubilee, I was like, this is fucking amazing. So, but uh, Apocalypse is just like a classic, iconic villain similar to Thanos. He looks cool. Uh, he's just like, I don't know. He's just like the perfect bad guy, especially with like all these X-Men releases. I think if they brought him out, it'd be really good. Uh, I'm going to cheat my own question a little bit. Uh, as far as like what I would like to see him have, but it's more how when they release him, I hope they release him, which I've talked to you a little bit about this, Brad, but mm-hmm. I hope that he gets like a release event that is like, you know, an ultimate encounter. You get Apocalypse, and then they also have his four horsemen as like part of the release uh, package with him. Yeah. So, but I do hope that he has like invulnerability. Like the minus one damage, and, and I think it'd be really cool if he, they gave him something that, like, a second model, and he could like grow bigger or something, like play into That's that. That's not bit. really a thing he does in the comics. That was more for the TV show. The thing with the him in the TV show is he had only had a few appearances, mm-hmm. and was ill-defined in the comics when they added him to the TV show. So uh, there's not. There's some things that don't quite line up with the comics. Well, I still want him to grow big. But, uh, yeah. (laughs) Apocalypse. He'd be my choice because he's just, he's fucking cool. He Uh, is cool. All right. Well, uh, I'll go ahead. uh, I was just going to say there are still so many characters in the Marvel Universe that they can add to this game. 
but at least we have Black it's Widow too. Staggering. Like thousands. That's like not so an exaggeration. Many. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I uh, was not able to make the LGS again because I was out of work for this week. Uh, did either one of you make make it to the shop this week? I I did. Um, did you play any games? I got. I did not. I just played Pokemon. Um, because when I got there, Brandon it was just the three of us. Brandon and Borka were getting ready to play, and then Borka left, and it just seemed like a good opportunity to play Pokemon for the first time. But they played. Um, Brandon played Malakith. His list was Malakith. Uh, Modok and Bullseye, and Bork That's was playing fun. Guardians. Yeah, well, he said he Modok's only in his roster because you talked him into it. I mean, I think Modok's really good, but good. Uh, and then Borka played Guardians, and he ended up with Peter Quill, Rocket, Groot, and then he wanted to try his anti Malekith. Which is She Hulk? It's She Hulk. Yep. So God, that's such a good learned, 14. We learned that game that She-Hulk is very good anti malekith attack. Yeah, I am not surprised. <laughs> yep. She is very good at dealing with Malekith. I mean, he texts me on and off and he's talking about it. And he's talking about She-Hulk, how she has like, you know, I mean, clearly she has superior weight training. She can apply slow to Malekith. She can apply stagger to Malekith. Uh, she, she can she throw Malakith. Yeah, like she is uh, very, very good into him. Uh, and they played hammers, and she she picked up a hammer, and then she on turn two in one activation dazed Malakith and picked up the hammer. That oh he gosh, had. yep. I bet but she had two hammers on top of everything else. Like, and he can't kill her in one activation. And he didn't seem like he could kill her in two activations either. I mean, whereas she can kill him in two activations. You're five, ten. I mean, you're probably. It takes a minimum of three, I would think, if you're rolling to kill her. Good. Yeah, to kill her. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It seemed like that was true after the second activation. Um, she had. 13 or 14 damage on her. Mm -hmm. um, and that was his whole list basically going into her. Yeah, you, you really want to get like the dazes and chaos. He might have been better off just to just ignore and try to get the rest of them, but the other ones are yeah. they're hard to get to because it's Rocket and Groot well, and Star-Lord hangs back. So Yeah, and it was a C and oh, uh, yeah. Borka, Borka abandoned one side of the C and Rocket and Groot were clear on the other. Yeah, and then Brandon's other two guys were on the other side of that scene, uh, the side that he abandoned. So it was really hard for him to, and it was sword base, so he he kept pushing Modok away. Yep, that I'm glad it worked out for yeah. him. They had been talking about it, so yeah. I'm glad that the tech. Worked. Yeah, I think that's very good tech. In fact, um, if my current tech doesn't work in my X Men list, I might just throw She Hulk in there. There you go. I, think I mean, she does fix a lot of problems. <laughs> she is a fixer. I think that Borg is like six wins in a row with Guardians now. Yeah, that was his sixth win. He yep. made sure to mention that. What a champ. All right, well, I think we're uh, ready to move on to character review. So let's get right into it. So we have Red Skull, Master of Hydra, uh, a.k.a. Johan Smit. He has a 4 physical, 2 energy, 2 mystic stat line. More on that in a minute. He has 7 health. Uh, he's 5 threat. He has size 2 and he has a medium move. Uh, so he's coming in with uh, 2 attacks. He has blitz strike, which is range 3, 6 dice physical. Uh, after the attack is resolved, this character gains 1 power. And then he has uh, 2 bullets of text. He has a wild hit blitz. After this attack is resolved, this character may advance short. Know that that is in any direction, not toward or away from a character. And then he has Wild Shield Push. If the target character is size 3 or less before damage is dealt, this character may push it away short. 
Uh, he has the energy attack, kneel before me. It is range to nine dice energy, uh, five power cost spender. Before choosing a target, this character chooses whether the attack this attack's type is energy or mystic. And it has a wild throw. After this attack is resolved, if the target character is size four or less, this character may throw the target character away medium. So a very good throw attached to it. Uh, he is one of two leaders for the world domination, or one of two leaders for the Hydra affiliation with the world domination leadership. Uh, during the power phase, allied characters gain one power if they are holding or contesting an objective token. And he has four superpowers, two active, two passive. Uh, the first one is active, empowered gauntlets, costs two. During the next blitz strike attack this turn, this character adds blanks in its attack roll to its total successes. He has the active all-consuming obsession. It is free. This character suffers one damage and gains two power. This superpower can only be used once per turn. Then he has the Leviathan armor, a passive superpower. During the power phase, this character chooses a shielding type. The chosen benefits last until the start of the next power phase. So the two that he can pick from are dispersion field. This character rolls three additional dice when defending against energy attacks and cannot be pushed or advanced by the effects of mystic attacks or enemy superpowers. And then it has the Null Field uh, armor setting. This character rolls three additional dice when defending against mystic attacks and does not suffer collision damage. Uh, so we'll, we'll deep dive that uh, more in a little bit, but a uh, very cool effect there. And then he has the passive superpower cut off one head. If an allied Hydra Troopers is not in play when this character is chosen to activate, Place them into play within one of this character. They gain a staggered token and are part of your squad. So that will be how he uh, brings in his minions. So over on his injured side, we have no changes other than he does go down to 6 health instead of 7. So uh, do you guys want to talk about Red Skull or do you want me to go ahead and dive into the minions really quick before we take a look? Read at the it? minions. Okay. Uh, yeah, minions first. So, the Hydra Troopers, they are coming in at 3 stamina, they are short move, and they are size 2. They have a 1 physical, 2 energy, 2 mystic defense line. They have 1 attack, which is energy, Hydra energy weapons. It is range 4, 4 dice. They have uh, the active superpower, Hydra Assault. So it is free, but it is an action. This character makes a move action. During its next attack action this turn, this character may reroll any number of its attack dice. After the attack is resolved, this character is KO'd. And then they have the passive Occupation Force. This character cannot pick up, hold, or interact with extract objective tokens. This character does not have to pay power to interact with secure objective tokens. Then lastly, they have this uh, passive that they're grunts, and they their parent is uh, Red Skull Master of Hydra. So, Occupation Force is really interesting. It's These are the, uh, I believe these are the first set of uh, grunts that uh, are specifically tailored to secures instead of extracts. So, yeah. uh, pretty interesting there. But, uh, yeah. So, let's go to uh, Red Skull Master of Hydra. So, uh, what are your guys' initial thoughts? Why don't you start us off, Fred? Uh, yeah, I'd love to start us off. I'd, I'd first like to welcome Brandon to the podcast. Oh, he, he uh, came in. He snuck in here. Snuck yeah, in. He, he showed up. Um, uh, what are my thoughts? Uh, rocks. <laughs> I think he's awesome. What, what, what else is there to say? Uh, I mean, look at that spender. It, it's expensive, but this is a guy who's probably swimming in power pretty regularly. Uh, and... That, that, it's really good. It, you can choose whether it's Mystic or Energy, which are the, the two best things to be. And being able to choose just makes it all the more versatile. Uh, and with his minions, his minions have a range 4 energy attack. That's so good. <laughs> That's so useful. And uh, they can do their special action where they get, where they kill themselves. And they will come back on that turn because then after they go, Red no, Skull goes. No. That's not how that no, would work. That's not how that works. Oh, okay. Well, how it works is if they're not on the table and you pick Red Skull, they would get to do their turn the turn they come in. So, like, if they're not there. 
and you pick Red Skull, you place the them, they activate. get stagger, and then they get to activate and do their one action. Okay, so it doesn't. It's when you pick Red Skull, it's not as if the minions go and then Red Skull is activated. No, when you pick Red Red Skull, Skull, yeah, when you pick Red Skull, the minions activate as part of Red Skull's activation. That's how it works. Well, that's less good than I thought, but it's still really good. Yep, it's it's probably the best uh, grunt entrance ability in that you don't have to. Spend an attack to do it. I mean, I cannot or tell pay you. power. Yeah, or like, pay power. It's completely free, and like when you look at uh, Nick Fury, uh, it specifically states when he does call on the cavalry, which costs him two power, that when they come in, they come in with an activated token. Yeah, so, uh, when, really good. Um, same with uh, Shadowland Daredevil, except they do get to make an attack. Uh, but with Shadowland Daredevil. Uh, he has to do that attack. The uh, I forget what it's called, but it, there are lots of times where that attack is not what you want to do yep. in that circumstance. Like it happens all the time where there's not an enemy in range of that attack, or you want to do two of his spender. I I mean, I can tell you so many times that I didn't want to. Use the I, th- I believe it's coordinated strike. Yep, it that's a coordinated cool. strike. Uh, yeah, yeah, coordinated strike attack, and I had to because I needed the minions on the table. So I I really like this Red Skull. I think he fucking rocks. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, what do you think, Brandon? Since you you're uh, able to hop in, what do you think about Red Skull? In here, mid. Uh, uh, hold on, I was exploring something while you guys were. Why Fred was uh, gallivanting a mist. Uh, <laughs> I think he's really good. Uh, like just looking at him, I think he looks. He looks pretty strong. I love that he can just uh, the suffer damage, gain two power. Seems really interesting. I'm not sure how often you're gonna really do that. He doesn't have as much lot. health as a lot of five threat characters, uh, especially. On his backside with only six, uh, five damage isn't particularly a lot if you're going to take one of that damage pretty immediately. Um, I wish his, I wish his pump happened on both his attacks. Uh, it's, it is kind of obnoxious that it only happens on the one. Uh, I think this character had to be really good. I like I, I've said it before. I think they were. Getting grunts seems to always get you an extra threat level. Uh, besides on Shadowland Daredevil, he's the only one that ever really felt like a four threat and got grunts. Uh, Nick Fury was pretty good, and then you had uh, the worst model, arguably, in the game, an Elektra, uh, that no one really needs to ever talk about. Um, I like the levitation armor. Or Leviathan. Leviathan, there you go. Yeah, Leviathan, not Levitation. Listen, I'm late because I fell asleep, everybody, <laughs> and just and literally woke up in a fog and jumped on here. Uh, the size restriction on the throws, annoying, but probably really smart. That's I mean, necessary. Size 4 is pretty yeah. good. Like, he just, he, he only can't throw Dormammu. And yeah. Sentinels, or Sentinels, I guess. I guess Sentinels and now, yeah. Sentinels. Yeah, so yeah, I think it's fine. Same day. Yeah, I, I think it's fine. I, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's fine. It, it's one of those where it'd be like, I it'd be like, uh, like the little icing that those little like balls of icing they put on the top of the cake. Like it, you don't need it, but like if you get one, it's pretty nice. Um, the only thing is like the, I mean, uh, I don't know how good the affiliation really is. Yes, I I agree, uh, and I think that. You're probably going to bring the other Hydra affiliation more often. Yeah, which is kind which of is because, a... and that shoehorns you into nine points in two models, right? Baron Strucker's a four. He's a three. Uh, is he a three? Yeah, okay. he's a three. Cool. I uh, also was. Uh, and that, so. and he will, uh, and it can heal Red Skull, uh, a little bit. Okay. Like yeah, the biggest, my Red biggest hold up on Red Skull is his health. Man, I don't know about you guys, yeah. but that it kind of worries me. 
Especially like, where you're always going to win the game. He has pretty good defenses to make up for that. Yeah, I, he does. I'm just worried that you hurt yourself and then you just like one throw kind of spikes and now he's dead. Which, I mean, that can happen with anybody. So it's probably an irrational thing. But I guess it's... Like, if you just choose the wrong, you know, armor type, which I guess Convocation is not as big, so you're probably almost always choosing a Dispersion Field. Uh, it's a matchup dependent, but I, I think yeah. that... Yeah, yeah. I don't know that there's... I think that there's a solid mix of physical attacks with, like, the other two yeah, attack types in the game. So, like, you have a mix of physical and energy or physical and mystic, but I don't know that yeah. you see like a crazy amount of like energy and like mystic attacks combined and yeah like you're, list, you're so. using odds are you're using the same one every yeah every so the, the fact that they i bet oh, uh, go ahead. i bet against magneto you use null field i bet against magneto you do too like you're already sitting at like a stock for physical defense which is great so like sitting at four physical and then giving you the option to pump energy or mystic i think gives you like the best flexibility but it's not my turn yet, so. Yeah. Well, no, you're, you're good. You're good. You can you can take it over. Like I said, my I, I think he's really good. I think my biggest concern is just like, especially on his backside. Say say for in some reason he flips like turn two. Now for the rest of the game, you're probably gonna want to add that extra power, and now you're just like bringing him closer to death. I guess is my fear with it. But go ahead, take it off. Before I go, I'll, I'll let I'll let Brad go. Go ahead, Brad. Okay, so uh, overall, I think he's pretty good. Um, I I bought the other box with Strucker because uh, Arnim Zola is cool and Strucker's a X Men bad guy, and I'm probably gonna play a little bit of X Men bad guys Hydra. Also, <laughs> but but I am not I'm not getting this model because it doesn't fit that whole X Men bad guy thing. But I think he is good. Um, I think that Michael is going to like playing him, for example. Um, I think it's interesting. I want to I ask Fred a question. Um, Fred, if you were playing Red Skull, how would you feel about playing into Black Order knowing that you had to put your grunts in every turn? I'd hate it. <laughs> okay. Uh, you'd have to play. What I'd do is I'd run the grunts to the back corner. No, I mean, here's uh, here's what you could also do. Yeah. So they come in with a stagger token, and then you can immediately do their action move. And then, uh, and then they they don't have a second action to shoot, but then they die. <laughs> <laughs> and you just then you just do, wait wait do they die or do the, doesn't it they, don't they, they have to take the attack? Well, no, no. So yeah, they, they make a move action, but you have to take the attack action to KO them because it has to yeah, resolve first. Have yeah. to take the oh, that's not as much fun. And yeah. I was going to go read Thanos to see if they there. had to KO they, you no, or if it was just don't. any enemy KO. Oh, so no. you're speeding the points. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. So yeah just literally. Yeah, he's not. Oh, he don't yeah, look too strong in Thanos. Yeah, it does say after the attack is resolved. No, no, you just don't play him in Thanos. Yeah. At all. Right. Right. You just play your other models. They might just struggle in general into Thanos, but that's not saying anything. Yeah, right. that's, Thanos that's is one of the best most models factions. Yeah. 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 Having a good uh, Thanos mod option is like usually the only selling point you have. So Yeah. I don't know. I think people who play him are going to like him that he's good and I'm not playing him, so I'm not gonna think about him very much. This is not um, the Nazi of taste for Brad. <laughs> well, uh, I think that I think that he's good. I, I think that he I think that he's a little bit more survivable uh, than than what Brandon might think. I I think if you're rolling like because uh, like I said, I think that you can really custom tailor with just like how team compositions are usually made up. I think that you can kind of tailor the Leviathan armor. Uh, to probably what can suit you for the entire game uh, and feel pretty comfortable about it. So on average, he's probably going to be rolling four or five defense dice, I would say. Um, it's I think that's a really strong effect. Uh, it would be cool if he could switch him like Vision. 
that would give him a little bit of extra something to spend his power on. But um, that might have been too good. Yeah, it probably would be have been too good. I think that you're right about that. I like that the way that the troopers come in. I think that the troopers are also very good. Uh, I have played like one game, uh, so it's just one game. But I played one game uh, under Red Skull leadership, and I can't stress enough about how strong of an effect uh, rerolling any number of dice are in this game. It's just a ridiculous yeah. effect. And if you can, cause they're going to die anyways. So if you take them and you make an attack with them and then you give them two extra dice with bear and Mordo, that's six dice reroll any number. And you don't care four with energy for so, with someone who doesn't do anything. Like yeah. Their like like they're not. actual trash. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I, now it is cool that they can uh, sit on secure. So that is one thing that I really, really enjoy about this. Uh, version of the grunts like i'm fine that they don't control the extracts and i like that they can interact for free so i can kind of see these guys being good on maybe something like a sword and just having like one more body to help you flip for free and that's like a 50 50 shot so or uh, on uh, riot spark they could oh uh, they heal can your people they can heal free. your people yep they yeah. can that so you can get two heals on a red skull activation so that's really good um yeah his blitz strike is good. Uh, six dice on a character feels really good. I like... Uh, so, I don't know that you really ever need to gain the two power unless you're just wanting to do... And take the damage. Unless you're just wanting to do, like, you know, blitz strikes to get a kill. Because uh, Count and Blanks... I mean, you can ask Corvus Glaive with, uh, about it. He'll tell you that at Count and Blanks is, makes you really consistent. So... Yeah. Um, I think that uh, if you're going in for a kill, you know, you empowered gauntlet or you all consuming obsession, empower gauntlets and uh, do do a counts blank strike. Uh, the blitz is really cool. It lets you do some trickery. The push is really cool. Uh, Neil before me is a very very strong attack. Uh, choosing energy or mystic and it being nine dice with a wild thrower on size four is I think it's just a phenomenal spender. Um, so very very good. That's like an A plus spender for me. Uh, the affiliation is good like i kind of look at it as because it's not hard to get people to contest objectives or hold something so like yeah some people can pull you off points and stuff like that so like maybe a couple of your people might not be on something maybe most of the time it's probably like one character unless you're doing something weird so i kind of look at it as a dormammu leadership with like out the downside and this character costs three less <laughs> And I thought the leadership was really good. So, uh, I really leadership's fine for the record. It's just not one like you're not gonna play them because of that leadership. No, no, no. Yeah, you're playing that. it because you like him, uh, or you like the affiliation. So, uh, well, the affiliation can't be bad because Zemo is affiliated. That's true. Zemo is like one of the best characters in the game. So, uh, but I like him. I so uh, hot take. Uh, looking at him, I think that this is maybe the first five threat leader that they've come up with that is that is correct. Like I think for a five threat leader, I think that he is survivable. He brings something in this case in the form of his leadership. So sometimes it's you know superpowers. Sometimes it's the leadership. I think with the leadership, he's bringing something that like supports his team. I think that he is sustainable on his own, though. Uh, and I like just what he brings as like a whole package. So I think as a five-threat leader, I think that this is the first one in the game that they've hit that you're like, this is going to feel really good to play. I think Thor's in the corner crying. Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much. Like, Thor is probably one of the better ones, right? Like, yeah. But when, but when you're looking at, like, Cable, who isn't, like, a bad piece, but clearly... Just when you look at statistics, he struggles. Um, it does feel like five threat leaders they like to whiff on more than anything. Yeah, I, I think that as far as like when you're looking at threat, like I think that they have done a phenomenal job with their twos. I think for the most part they've done a really, really great job with their threes. I think that sometimes you see balancing mm. issue where some threes mm. feel like fours. Somebody or some saying, threes feel like twos. <laughs> yeah, or some threes. I, I think the threes actually is probably where they're most balanced. No, I actually think threes Weakest. is probably where they most up, they mess up the most. Really? Yeah, the sand, yeah. sand and crossbones. 
I think threes are either a hit or a strikeout. I don't. I yeah. think they're pretty inconsistent on threes. I would say that five. There's also, but there's also like twice as many threes as the next leading. Yeah, I mean that's fair. Yeah, the, they have so a they, bigger, There's bigger a lot. There's size. a lot to whiff. There's a lot to whiff on. Yeah, I think fours is their most consistent by far. Really, I think uh, it's twos. It's, yeah, I think well, twos. Are the yeah, best. twos. twos are I I kind of exclude yeah. twos. I think they do. I because I do. I think they do a really good job on twos. So I just go like four through. I guess it's eight is now the. Although I would say um, seven is also pretty consistent. Seven is really consistent model. and being very tight, super very good. tight group. Very tight group. <laughs> yeah, but just in that retrospect, like I think the fours are very, very top to bottom. I, I don't. There's not a whole lot of fours. I think they've really missed on. Uh, they've missed on a pile of fives. Yeah, so, I think I files, get where you were kind of going with that. Yeah, five. So like, as just a five threat in general, I think that he is better, way like miles better than some of the fives that we have in the game. And then I think he's bar none the best five threat leader. Like when you're just purely talking about leaders and five threat, I think that he's bar bar none like the best five threat leader in the game. Like he's really good. And mm-hmm. what I like to see out of five threat characters and especially like leaders is are they do they have at least like some survivability to where they're not just gonna die? Yeah, he has that. Do they have some way to support their team? He has that through his leadership. Does he have maybe some way to do some kind of either mobility or control either one this guy has both and then do they have some form of consistency because when you look at thor like i don't think that he's a bad piece and we i mean we've covered him before like i think that he's fine he struggles you from love to trash thor bro. i don't love to trash thor i don't know why you hate thor so much. i just said i did now you're trolling me i know you are i don't and know I, why you hate him uh, so much man uh but uh, the one thing that he's lacking is like you're when like if we've talked about before when you want to get that damage off to get the stagger, he's just missing it, and that's because he's missing some consistency. And Red Skull brings a form of consistency, consistency and empowered gauntlet. So I think just as a complete package, he's very very good. But I'd argue there are three good five threat leaderships. There are three good five threat leaderships. Yeah. What are those? Uh, the Sentinel Prime. Oh, I'm the, not counting Sentinels. Sen- okay. The Hydra. I the pre- Hydra. Yeah. And then Doctor Strange Sorcerer Supreme is super, super good. Like, especially as a leader in Convocation. Like, super good. You might not count it, but, like, he is super, super good as that leadership. I don't know that I count it. I don't know that I count it. I forgot I mean, about I know you weren't. Prime. I know you weren't counting either of those. Yeah. So I did want to bring those up because those are both very good Uh, it's real easy to fix cables leadership (laughs) it is it is you just take away the once per turn yeah 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 it's interesting that they've just let that happen forever and to be fair dr strange and the defenders is a very good leadership it's It's just just such an awkward faction yeah it's just such an awkward faction like that leadership and model is very good. I think that this leadership is like, better it, than that. I would rather have the power than spend the power and, and put hex. Then always it. have a weakness? Than yeah. Always having the weakness. I think I would rather just have the power. Oh. I don't I disagree. Heavily. Play them against each other. We'll see no. which we'll one. see who wins, yeah. <laughs> we'll see who wins that fight. It's Doctor Strange. Oh. Bold move cotton. Doctor Strange like just those two models. Doctor yeah. Strange. Oh, yeah. oh I thought you were talking yeah. about a legitimate game. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's closer because the rest of the team's better on Hydra's side. But no, like Doctor Strange can always hit whatever you didn't Leviathan armor. Yeah, no, that's hundred yeah. percent correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually yeah, I actually I would I would firmly disagree on that leadership being better. I think the Defender's leadership is arguably one of the best leaderships in the game. I just the the affiliation. Oh, we're just, far field. We're far yeah, field. yeah, we're we're getting off. We're getting off but they're very we're top heavy as an affiliation. But uh, yeah, I think they're. I honestly, the last three they've arguably got correct at a five threat leadership with the prime, red skull, and the convocation leadership. Which, if you're playing Sorcerer Supreme style, you're usually almost always bringing him as your leader. Um, Black Bolt Cable, Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. I just, and I for whatever know. reason, Jared has an absolute disdain for Thor, Prince of Asgard. Okay, we're ready to rate him. 
<laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but yeah, we we can't move on to rating. I don't hate Thor. Uh, Brandon, we'll start with you. What are you going to give Red Skull? I don't, I don't hate. Thor. I don't hate um, Thor. I'm probably not as high on him as you guys are, um, which is per you, especially Fred. Fred's probably over there determining if he wants to give him an A plus or an S. Um, <laughs> I think he's good. Um, I think the affiliation is good. Again, I, I, I'm not super high on the leadership. I think the leadership is fine. Uh, I do think you're almost always going to take Struckers. Um, I do like it on an F. You can have it. That's pretty nice on any either of the Fs. Um, I, I have some... I'm a little... I think I'm probably overly cautious. The health pool is not very high for me at 13 and 5 threat is um, rather low for a 5 threat character. Uh, so I want to I wanna play... I want to hedge my bets and play it safe and give him a B plus. Okay, B plus. I do want to point out, uh, I think the Honey Badger and Nebula, those... They don't work with his leadership. So don't take them. Right, yeah, they yeah. don't. Oh, you're right. They, they don't benefit right. from it. Uh, what about you, Fred? What are you going to give him? Well, I'm over here debating whether to give him an A plus or an S. <laughs> uh, uh, I, and I'm going to land on an A plus because I think that all of the negatives that Brandon brought up are valid. It's just, I don't care. I want to play him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think he's an awesome model. Like, definitely play him. Like, I think I'm, yeah. I'm just hedging my bets a little bit. And I, I've got I've to bring Fred into reality every now and again. Yeah, yeah. So I'm put. Um, so I'm giving him a, an A plus. All right. What about you, Brad? I, I love this. I don't. I don't. I don't think he's A plus ass. I, but I do think he's pretty good. I'm, I'd give him an A. All right. Uh, I'm gonna go A plus. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm with Brad on this one. <laughs> All right. So that brings us up to like a what, like an A. Yeah, an A. Yep. Uh, I do want to touch on one thing that I forgot. Uh. I don't know that it sways uh, our scores at all, but I do want to cover... He does have a specific tactic card to him. I do think it's a trap, but... Uh, it is called Occult Research. It's Hydra. It's active. During the power phase, Red Skull, Master of Hydra may spend 10 power to play this card. When Red Skull, Master of Hydra, and all characters within two... Oh, wait. Yeah, Red Skull, Master of Hydra, and all characters within two of him gain a stagger token. Red Skull, Master of Hydra gains the following superpower for the rest of the game. This character may perform an additional action each activation. So, uh, I mean, that's that, that's cheeky. That's fun. I, think I don't a, think it's it's a, a it's a trap. I think it's bad. Yeah. It's yeah. Trap. When are you gonna ever have ten, and then stagger yourself? You it'll be near the end of the game when you can actually do that. So like, you know, this is something Michael will use on his son at his house at their kitchen table. <laughs> no. Like it. Michael will use it against somebody in a tournament and it will turn the game around and he'll win because that's the type of player <laughs> Michael is. Yeah. Yeah, but, you're like, right. It, it's good, realistically. So just keep in mind, it says during the power phase, he may spend some power to play this card. Uh, I think this happens before you would power up. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so you have to make sure that you have the 10 power on you before you would power up. So if you have 9 and you're banking on it, you're not going to be able to play it. Uh, typically, I think that this probably gets played after you've been flipped and have power. Uh, it's nice to get stagger. Like, you'll immediately get the extra action, so the stagger doesn't ruin you as much. It just gives you an extra turn. But I think all in all, at most, you're seeing this happen turn three. You're gonna have to sit on power and stuff. I don't like it. I think that it's. I think it's a trap. So. I feel like a lot of the tactics cards lately have been very trappy. I just uh, well, there are some, and some of them rock. Like some of them are trappy, and some of them are awesome. Yeah, I feel like it's one or the other. We're not getting anything in the middle. We're not getting like any like, oh, it's pretty good. We're getting like that card's real good, or like, ah, it's a trap. I mean, that's what makes it exciting, right? Who wants to be in the middle of the road all the time? We either want to fucking go all in or not at all. You know. Well, with all the bands and shit, I'd like some middle of the road cards every oh now and again. Gosh. All right. Well, uh, for the most part, except for Brandon, uh, sitting kind of high on Red Skull. Uh, we like him. We think he's a good leader. So it uh, should be releasing in October. So pick him up. Give him a try. Uh, First you... week of October, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's like October 14th, I think, is like the street date. 
but yeah, if you guys have played them on TTS or something like that, or you're looking forward to playing them, let us know in the comments uh, what roster you're putting together, or if you like them, or let us let us know in general what you think. But uh, with that, I believe we can move on to a comic book recommendation. So what do you uh, have? Brett? Sure, I have one of those. Even though I really thought about not. Because, uh, once again, this is not a character that's ever a version of the character. It's ever appeared in a comic book. AMG created it, pitched it to Marvel. They liked the idea, so they gave them the go-ahead. Uh, but I did pull a comic recommendation anyway. So, I want one where uh, Red Skull pretty powerful. And, of course, I wanted it to tie into X-Men as much as possible. So what I have for us today is Uncanny Avengers 25. Uh, this is by Rick Remender and Daniel Acuna. And it is a tie-in to Axis. It's actually like the last issue you read before you read the Axis event. Um, it's This issue is more infamous than it is like just good. Um, Red Skull has uh, stolen part of Xavier's brain and inserted it into his own head oh, okay. so that he has so that he has telepathic powers and that's been an ongoing plot line for a while now uh, but in this particular issue uh, he has created a mutant concentration camp and this pisses Magneto off a whole bunch uh, and uh, Magnet and Magneto kills Red Skull just straight up kills him um spoilers which, which given the uh what is happening in the comic you would think oh that's a good thing but the other characters including his ex-lover Rogue and his ex-daughter Scarlet Witch uh ex-daughter Yes. Do you want me to explain? Go on. Go on. No. <laughs> Fred but 100% I want wants to. you to explain. We got to wrap yeah, this podcast want. up. <laughs> I, I will explain the ex-daughter thing in just a second. But they treat Magneto like he was the bad guy in the situation. They're like, how could you have done that? How could you do that? And then Red Skull actually gets better and becomes Red Onslaught. And the Axis event is not very good. But um, it's just, it's crazy that in the story, like Magneto does something that I think most people would say is um, justified. Good. Ju yeah, justified, if not uh -huh. flat out good. And, but the characters treat it like it's not. Rick Remender does this a couple times in the run. Um, there's an infamous speech he has Havoc, who's also in this issue, give that basically everyone else in the comics industry goes, that's really weird. <laughs> but, um, yeah, ex-daughter. So when the when scarlet witch and quicksilver first appeared they're just like characters in the brotherhood but later they learned that they they learned and magneto learned that they were his son and daughter and that was the status quo for a very long time until like from the 60s until the avengers movies and they didn't oh. have they didn't they have the have rights right. to x men so they wanted to separate them from the mutants. So they had them find out that they weren't really Magneto's children. They were experiments by this guy called the High Evolutionary. And um, they weren't really mutants either. Uh, and that's now the status quo. But um, recently, Magneto in comic said whether you're actually biologically my children or not you are my children that's so, sweet yeah so they kind of fixed that in the comics but you guys didn't even ask about the ex ex lover rogue 
Yeah, which is, that, which I, was, is awesome. I was I was waiting for awesome, Fred to very get there. Interesting. Yeah, they went to they got depowered and went to the Savage Land, which is where the dinosaurs live, and they dated. <laughs> and and they specifically never had sex because she lost her virginity to Gambit. Um, so some fans have made shirts that um, say, hey, like, have you ever heard the phrase Magneto is right? Uh, sir, I've heard you say it. Oh, yes. well, yeah, Magneto, Magneto is right about the mutant thing. But they've they've parodied that and it, it says Magneto eats box. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> Brad's specifically a part of a weird part of the internet, guys. No, you know, no, no, no. I'm not. But DC put out an announcement at one point saying that Batman does not do that because it's unheroic. And then they, and because <laughs> Magneto and Rogue dated, but specifically did not sleep together, the fans thought it would be funny to parody the, what was going on with Batman. And the Magneto is right, and they started making Magneto eats box shirts. Batman doesn't do what because it's not heroic. Eat box. Eat box. Yeah, that's such a heroic thing. Yeah, I what, thought what so is, too. What is DC talking about here? <laughs> no, I don't know, but there's a there's a thing with Catwoman. It's not heroic to be selfless. Yeah, it was it, this thing with Catwoman, and people were like, talking it was the whole it. thing. I don't know where you guys yeah. where you guys were during that. It was huge. Yeah, no, it I was all over the internet. No, that's like the most heroic thing you can do. I I agree. Not the most heroic thing like ever, but it's the most heroic <laughs> thing you can do. If you're gonna in, take if you're gonna take anything from this podcast, guys. It's play Nazis and eat box. Period. Eat box. Uh, if you put up, you know, saving an orphanage full of kids ver- from fire versus eating box. Just remember, eating box is the more heroic. Thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go I, down on your wife; she'll be happy, and you will be happy. It's how it works. Yeah, like <laughs> if you're not doing it at home, you need to. I don't know. Before every comic book recommendation, because we're two weeks in a row now, I think I need to just play like the Pornhub like drums. No, <laughs> we're, we're two for is, we're two no. for two. You know, like if you put on a Pornhub video, it's oh, like yeah, cause Brad so has been in absolute rare form for a couple of weeks now, and I love there, it more than anything. You guys don't even what? know. I forgot about the Nightcrawler dating his uh, stepsister thing <laughs> from last week. Stepbrother, I'm stuck. We know exactly where uh, Brad's been the last couple of weeks. It's so been it's, on Pornhub. Yeah, no, been, no, no. It no. has been great. No, I'm just seeing Aaron too much. That's true. That, that is true. The last two weeks, it's only been like the three of us, and we have negatively influenced you. Yeah. <laughs> the 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 lingo is getting to be too much. Like, uh, we went to the mall, and Aaron works at the at the mall where where near where I live, and like I made a hard left to go to a store, and Becca's like, "Where are you going?" I was like, "I'm gonna go see Papa." <laughs> She's like, "What?" I went. I was ironically there today, and um. Uh, I walked in. He was like, "Ooh, hey, daddy!" <laughs> and his coworker was just like, I, "I really, I know immediately, like how close you are with somebody based on how you greet them when they walk in the door." <laughs> yeah. And I was like, "That's a little tame, actually." Yeah. And he just like looked at me wide eyed, and I was like, "You don't need to know what we're about." He was in the store. He can't be. He can't go like full on. No, yeah, like I'll see him greet customers and be like, "Hey, how you doing? Do you need any help? Do you need any help?" Hey, yeah, is there anything I can do for you today? And then as soon as I like crest through the entrance of the door, he's like, "Hey, what's up, Dad?" <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I love it. Uh, getting back on topic to Red Skull Master of Hydra, Brandon, do you have a roster for us this week? I, I yeah, I do. I didn't know if I was gonna be asked for one or not. You, uh, uh, you, you have now Fred. Fred's the fun segment, so he takes us out. So you're, you're now your segment is now slotting in after comic right. books. So go let ahead. Let me, let me pull it up here. Give me a second. Sorry, I was ill prepared. I didn't. I was too happy about the the Brad that we have now. Well, I was also ill prepared uh, because I was away this week, or else I could have let you know that your segment was good instead of putting you on the fucking spot. No, Should you're like, good. Hey, so, man, uh, you have comic books. It's up here. So, there. What is the best thing about Red Skull's grunts? The reroll any number. Yeah, oh, and what else? The contesting secures. Yep. Yeah, they contest secures. Yeah. You know what affiliation loves? 
contestants. Oh, oh my god. Do yeah. you know what Did affiliation it? loves having multiple models? Uh, Listen, guys, you play this bet, this little boy with Kingpin, and you're gonna have yeah, a real good time. All right, they do it's not count affiliation. as Cabal. They don't, but they count, and that matters. Yeah, the counting is what's important. Three beats two. <laughs> yeah, because with um, uh, with uh, what's his face, with Shadowland Daredevil, they do not. So. Having them count on a secure is really good. This Criminal Syndicate also is an affiliation that I feel like always plays around with five threat models. Um, I think you can have a good core of out of affiliation models with five threat Red Skull, three threat Lizard, and a four threat Black Dwarf. And then you get to build the roster, or the rest of your roster, uh, Black Cat, Bullseye, Kingpin, um, or the core I would start with. And then you have those three and you can fill it out with whatever other uh, four models you like that uh, are affiliated with criminal syndicate. I like it. That's gross. Very, very good. I like it a lot. I approve. I like it. And for the record, I don't normally like to use criminal syndicate as a list um, recommendation. Cause I feel like it's sometimes a cop out. Cause almost everyone fits in with Kingpin. Uh, as long as they are like kind of beefy or like can do something, uh, but I do think he fits in very very well. I've tried a lot of different fives in the list, and uh, I think he's going to be a really strong one. All right, well, thank you very much. All right, well, you know what time it is, Fred. It's time to take us out with your non sequitur recommendation. So go ahead. Yes, yes, it is. And uh, so last time I put I brought a video game, which is a classic classic jrpg that most people who love jrpgs have heard of uh i'm bringing another classic jrpg that most people haven't heard of mostly because it it languished on the sega dreamcast for most of its life uh it was later ported over to the gamecube so it doesn't completely not exist but it, dolphin, I'm, I'm raging it is uh it is the game Skies of Arcadia. I've heard uh, of that game. Oh, uh, and it is an outstanding JRPG. Uh, it is set in a world where there are floating islands and floating continents in a in a sky, and you play as air pirates who fly around in ships and attack the powers that be. It is such a great game uh, i cannot mo more highly recommend it uh, and uh there's a whole concept of uh a lost people uh the the people of the silver moon who are filled with this innate power that and they're the leader of or not the leader but the most powerful one of these people turns out to be the boss of the game and in one of his attacks it's called Kneel Before Me. Oh, look at and that. There you go. That was, I couldn't, I, every time I hear that phrase, I hear him say that phrase, and then he kills your team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, this is, I, I recommended Chrono Trigger last week, and I'm recommending Skies of Arcadia this week, and that is probably 60 plus hours of game between the two, and it's 60 plus hours of fantastic game also not a game that's cheap to buy fred's really trying yeah. to break your wallets here I guess. you know why these games are not cheap I, I know good. actually why you're gonna say that they're really good they're actually just because really expensive really because nobody bought the dreamcast and nobody could keep their gamecube games in one piece that's why this, these games are expensive well, i will tell you uh, what i have it for the gamecube and can i should you it? not be able to find it <laughs> oh, no. No, you listen, can use mine. this is legitimately, um, I would like to, so I kind of trashed on him a little bit last week for Chrono Trigger, um, even though I know Chrono Trigger is a pretty good game. Um, however, Skies of Arcadia is legitimately one of the reasons I've almost bought a Dreamcast. There are not many good games for the Dreamcast. No. This <laughs> is one of them. If yeah, you're going to the... sit through playing on the awful Dreamcast controller, like spend the $100, buy a copy of Skies of Arcadia. 
Yeah, a hundred. Uh, no, play, play, get the you. Most people. <laughs> I was about to say that most people have a GameCube sitting around. That's not the not the it's, case. It's awesome. Uh, I actually uh, have a GameCube you like can three find feet from me. A game GameCubes are findable. You can find GameCubes. They're probably not that expensive, all things considered. And you can get the GameCube version of Skies of Arcadia, and it's a better version of the game. Uh, GameCube's going to run you about $75 to $80, roughly, on average. Yes. That's not bad. It's That's not, not bad. bad. However, Skies of Arcadia for the GameCube is about $150. Jesus so. H. Christ. <laughs> yeah. So, however, it is cheaper to just buy a Dreamcast and buy the original game. Hey, Brandon. Uh, not much you cheaper. Play... Dreamcasts are not super cheap because finding one with everything is relatively annoying. Sorry, go ahead. Yes. Uh, did Let's you try. play any of Chrono Trigger? No, I haven't. I, I did, however, look for it today at a shop when I was in Ashland. Um, you have a copy. I know, <laughs> yeah, I was but to I like to you play can... the originals before. I probably will, because I did talk to them about it. Like, what were the odds of like them getting a copy? Like, if they have a copy, stuff like that. Um, a Sega, also on the record, Sega Dreamcast will cost you about a hundred and thirty dollars, roughly. Um, but much yeah, more it's, than uh, the GameCube. The GameCube, yeah, is a yeah, much yeah, yeah. better console. Yeah, that's very accurate. GameCube games, however, are massively expensive. I honestly today bought the Clone Wars for the GameCube, um, which for Xbox is about a $4 game. It's a $20 game for the GameCube, and that's about the markup percentage between the two systems. Uh, it's just GameCube games didn't survive. Uh, but yeah, Chrono Trigger, I'm probably going to because the way he talked about it is, is finding a copy um isn't really impossible uh it's but you have to act on it rather quickly uh they do sell rather fast as well as you're probably going to settle on a copy that's not in great condition so i'll probably be booting up the old uh snes classic and giving chrono trigger a run this weekend yeah, chrono trigger is eminently playable right now it, it, it... I think that uh, it is it is findable without having to find the original copy. You can, it exists in emulator or ROM form. Uh, I, I just prefer it on, I your, like... on your iOS. It, it yeah. exists as a legal game to purchase for iOS. Yeah, I just I like to play it with the old controller and everything, like in front of my fat back TV, and I want to enjoy it like I would have enjoyed it when it came out. Damn it. That's fair. Uh, hey, Brandon. Uh, if you want to play Skies of Arcadia, come to the tournament on, on Saturday, yeah. and I will let you borrow my cop for the GameCube. You, you weren't there Wednesday. I am technically supposed to help someone move Sunday, Saturday. If I can get out of that, I'll probably be there. If I can't, uh, I won't be there. I also I might be able to arrange a timeline where I can do that, do all three of things that would be done that day including vampire that night you're trying, you're trying to have it all you're trying to live the live the full life yeah which would be tough with my dogs so. in the city. you don't yeah. get to be a publisher and have a have a boyfriend and have a have a kid yeah i know i don't get a i don't get to live the best life all the time <laughs> this this is back-to-back -back great recommendations fred i'm gonna give i, you I have been here. given i've been knocking them out of the park the entire time I've been doing this. That, I'm not. Yeah, I haven't Every said yeah. I wasn't. I just specifically love these last two. They're they're right at my wheelhouse. So. Well, thank you very much, Fred. You're welcome. All right. Well, that wraps us up for this week. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, we have a couple more characters I think uh, on backlog left to take a look Which at. One. But uh, I, we haven't done Artem Zola, have we? No, no, we, we have not done Zola. We have not oh. done the original Human Torch. Yeah, so we got to I'm, I'm proposing right here on the cast that we tell the listeners that we're going to do the original Human Torch next week and then, and then do Arnim Zola instead. <laughs> All right, so next week will be the uh, the Human Torch cast. Wink, wink. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. If uh, After we get through these characters, if we don't have any new reveals, if there is a character, because we kind of go back through the characters that have already been released and kind of grade them, if there's one that you in particular you want us to do, uh, please let us know. Give us a shout in the comments or something. But uh, yeah, until next week, talk to you guys later. Bye.